Hello and welcome to this slightly different video. I normally do vlogs, daily vlogs, but today I'm going to show you the collection of flutes that I have in Flute Cave here, aka my cellar. Here they are. I was just um, having a rummage through them the other day because I'm going to lend this one here to somebody. And when I got them all out and laid them all out like that, I thought, hmm, I wonder if people are interested in the difference in them. So, well, I thought I'd... Uh, show you them all in turn, talk about their unique properties and uh, maybe play a little bit of something on them, just a little bit, just so you can get a taste of how they sound. So this is my normal one, my Altus flute that I normally play. I won't uh, start off with playing that for you because people who are subscribed to my channel hear quite a lot of that one. So I shall skip on to ooh, this one I think I'll play first. This is a more flute and it's just plastic it's basically a plastic tube i looked up online to see if i could find it they don't seem to sell them anymore or if they do i couldn't find any trace of them but i did find a dixon flute which was very similar and that was 69 pound 99 so i think that's roughly what this sort of thing would cost you if you wanted to buy one and it is basically a plastic tube it comes in two bits it's got a head head joint and the main bit so only in two pieces, not like my normal one which is in three and as you can probably see it's just a completely cylindrical bore, not conical, that looks funny, <laughs> but it is, that's just um, your depth perception there, making it look like it's smaller one end than the other but they are the same, I can assure you. But does it actually play? I mean, bearing in mind that my main flute costs, well, it's probably way over £2,000 to replace it now. I have had it for decades. And I've had quite a lot of use out of it over the years. Honestly, it's okay. You can practice your embouchure on it. I think if you're serious about flute playing, you're going to grow out of it quite quickly. It's harder to get a good tone out of this than a decent instrument without any shadow of a doubt whatsoever. I find it harder to get a good tone out of this and I've been playing for decades. But anyway, I'll give you a quick tune on it. Now I'm going to play you something nice and slow on this and um, it's not for any other reason than I'm so not used to playing it I literally put my fingers in the wrong place and miss the holes if I try and do anything fast. So anyway, here's a little waltz for you. <laughs> So this one I've just played is a simple system flute. It only has six holes. If you turn it around, you'll see there's nothing at the back. There's no thumb hole. If you play a recorder, you'll be familiar with that hole at the back there. Also on a normal flute, you get a thumb hole at the back. But with that simple system, no, it's just the six holes, exactly the same as on a tin whistle. You don't have the hole at the back. And it's commonly used in traditional music. Now this one is also a simple system flute, but this is a expensive one. This is a Tom Arby flute and I will leave a link to his website. I've just checked. It's still active and I presume he's still making flutes. He lives in Switzerland. And this is a Pratton copy. Pratton flutes have got a particularly wide bore so the space inside is particularly wide and the holes are big compared to some other wooden flute models that are simple system like a rudel rose for instance has tiny little holes and the bore inside is narrower and more tapered more conical whereas this is more cylindrical it is still tapered but it's not tapered as much 
so this is loud and mighty compared to those other ones they're very sweet and lovely as you can see this simple system flute has keys on it and a lot of them don't you can get a lot of these wooden flutes that don't have the metal keys on them but this is fully chromatic it's a different fingering system to this one this is the sort you'll see in orchestras the Boehm system but the simple system is not normally chromatic but with the addition of these extra keys it can be fully chromatic so let's give this one a little bit of a whirl then the reason I barely play this very 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 beautiful flute is my hands just can't cope with the spaces between the holes it's too big for me and the humiliating thing is I've been in workshops in the past with children who have tiny hands and they've coped absolutely perfectly well with their inline simple system wooden flutes and I can't, I just get searing pain from the tip of my finger to the elbow after about one repetition. So I won't be playing it very long for you. So real, real shame because this is a beautiful instrument. I probably should sell it because somebody else could be playing it. But anyway. What was I going to play? Okay, I remembered. for a good month practicing every day trying all sorts of different positions I just can't oh hands are shaking that it's just so painful <sighs> now on my normal bone system flute as you can see these keys are offset so I put one finger there one finger there and one finger there and it just it really follows the sort of the natural shape of your fingers because your fingers are not all in a straight line <laughs> so that's much more ergonomic so that's that beautiful rb flute gorgeous instrument next what is this funny comical looking thing here you may be wondering i've repositioned it so it's next to my normal one as you can see there's a lot more similarity between these two so this is a flute for a small child who's just taken up the flute so Izzy did used to play the flute for a little while and this was her flute that she played and I paid about £125 for it and it's uh, just flutes and actually it's not bad at all, not bad at all, it's got less keys on it, as you can see mine goes down lower, mine goes down to a C and Isabel's goes down to a D and that makes the instrument a lot lighter for a small child to hold up sideways with their arms up in the air as you can imagine you need to develop your muscles to be able to do that and uh, have stamina but also it's a lot shorter what you tend to find with the very small children when they first take up an instrument is it's too big for them and they develop a bit of a habit of resting it on their shoulder and that's just it's no good so that's one argument for starting them off with a much shorter instrument. This instrument is good up to about grade five, but once the music gets more complicated than that, you're gonna need the extra keys. You're gonna need to go down to that low C. Now I've got some trill keys, which activate these ones at the back here. I'll just show you the trill keys and I'll just press the little trilly buttons here. And you can see they go up and down. And the reason we have that is, when you need to do a trill really, really, really fast, sometimes it can be very cumbersome to be doing the correct fingerings. For instance, is a, a C to a D, a high C to a D. It's, that's quite a lot of fingers to coordinate all at once, but you can cheat by going with your trill key, you see. But a young child who's grade five and below is not going to need 
to do a trill like that so that's why they don't need that extra bit of mechanism. So having less buttons to choose from definitely simplifies that learning process and gives them a chance to develop the habit and it just gives them a chance to develop all the muscle memory and the positions of the notes without having to be too overwhelmed with choice in those early days. There's a few extra little bits stuck on top that's just part of the key that's all it is it's just so the their little fingers don't have to stretch as far that's all that is they can be a bit closer together it's more ergonomic for them. I find this instrument so weird to play but when I first got it I was very pleasantly surprised by how good it sounded and how fluid it was to play given that it was only a hundred and something pounds. I don't know what they're retailing for at the moment, uh, I might look it up and put it in the description for you. Something that I find really strange is how close the sound is, I'm not used to hearing sound coming out of the keys because it's usually quite a way away from my ear so how in your face the sound is is really a shock when you're used to an adult sized instrument and also I don't have that nice three points of tension like normally you've kind of got like a three point pivot thing going on and you have still got it with this but I don't know it's not the same <laughs> it takes a bit of getting used to anyway I'll play your tune <laughs> The piccolo. This is a super, super cheap, bottom of the range, trashy piccolo. <laughs> uh, I think it cost about £350 and I was 16 when I had that. I'm 45 now, so that's quite old. I don't know what it's retailing at now. It's exactly an octave above the normal flute. As you can see, this doesn't have that end foot joint on it. It only goes down to a D, but it's an octave higher than that one, it has the little trill keys, look, there they are. Um, what else can I tell you about that? Not a lot, let's just give it a blast. This has never ever been serviced as far as I'm aware. It probably needs a complete overhaul. I am not used to playing it and if I was gonna be playing this professionally, I would do a lot of practice to develop the embouchure required to get a good tone out of it. So I am not doing this instrument justice. Just bear that in mind. It's literally come out of its case for the first time today and I don't think I've really played it in decades because there's not a lot of call for it in my current bands. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm just getting on a minute. <laughs> I'm taking it off on camera so you don't have a big continuity jump. Right. Whew. I've had to put the heating on so my fingers are warm enough but now I'm getting hot because I'm playing. Right, this is so challenging for me to get a decent tone out of it. I do apologise. <laughs> doing what it does it's building up condensation inside and then it's like it's sealing the notes shut even after the keys have come up it's like you know like you get a bubble on things and then it pops after a while it does that oh it's on that one look can you see it doing that I don't know if it's coming out on the camera it's like a, a momentary delay where the condensations still sealing it so if you see me doing this at a gig that's what I'm doing I'm <laughs> just blowing away the extra moisture I do it with my flute all the time people probably think I am a complete lunatic but there is a reason for it let's try that again I can hear this one's doing it as well yep you see it's a swine for it. I remember it always used to do this. It used to embarrass me in band because it would sound like I was still playing the note before. <laughs> it's a bit chilly down here so it's filling up quickly with condensation. Let's try a 
do a blues version now. It's sealing the B flat. I'm beginning to think this might be unplayable for this very reason. <laughs> through I don't know if you could hear it but I could hear those blips as they were bursting oh flute woes right next this is a key free <laughs> well it's in D uh, but it doesn't have any mechanism on it uh, simple system piccolo I suppose it's a Tony Dixon you can still buy these ones I don't know how much this cost I've got a feeling somebody gave me this one it's just like a tin whistle except you blow it sideways and it's got a flute hole on it <laughs> We just got a few whistles really. This is my favourite one, this is a Blackwood one. I paid about £100 for that in the year 2000. It's beautiful. I do actually play this in bands. So this has not been in the box for 20 years. This has actually been getting played, though I don't tend to practice it, just can play it because it's got a lot of transferable skills from the flute. <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly out of breath because I just legged it upstairs trying to put the light on by there because it was just so dark from this area but anyway. Let me move a lamp. Oh it's, it'll do. They're not being perfectionists to me. <laughs> I'll play you a tune I wrote called Catley's Rampage. I suppose I could do a couple of snatches, just a couple of bars on these so you can hear the tone difference between the metal and the wood. This one's actually an E flat, it's kind of worn off, you can't see, so it's in a different key. I like E flat. <laughs> and this one is a little squeaky one. Woo, this would be good if your child is very small and got small hands. reunited with my normal instrument that feels comfortable in my hands and not awkward because I'm used to playing it.
If you like this video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel to grow. If you're interested in what my days are like when I'm actually out gigging, when it's not a pandemic, feel free to click on this playlist here, which is full of vlogs made on gigging days and you will see what we do musically. If you're new here and you'd like to follow more of our story, feel free to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.